Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time on our channel, you can press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications and thereby subscribe to our channel. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes and all the updates for all our latest videos. So moving on to question number one, BBPS started as an interoperable platform for repetitive bill payments which covered bills of five categories. The scope and coverage of BBPS was expanded in 2019 to include all categories of billers which raise all recurring bills except DASH. The RBI has now decided to permit DASH also as a biller category in BBPS. Which of the following terms fit in both of these blanks? So one out of these is the answer which fits in in both these blanks. BBPS is basically a platform, a system wherein you can pay your bills. So when it was launched, it was launched to cover five categories of bills. And then in 2019, when its scope was expanded, one category of bills or recharges was there, where uh, which was not acceptable on this platform. But RBI recently has allowed that very category also. So have, let's have a look at it. First of all, talking about BBPS, it stands for Bharat Bill Payment System. So what is it? From the very name, it's clear that it's a system which enables the bill payments. So we have different platforms wherein we pay the bills. Okay, like we use a different uh, wallets. Uh, we can make you with payments using Paytm, HDFC banks app. So what they do? There are certain apps, certain websites, or we can say certain banks or non-banks which use a system a platform which enables them to make sure that people can make the bill payments so the system which some of the, those platforms used is called the bharat bill payment system bharat bill payment system is interoperable platform hai ek system hai jo aapko bills pay karne mein help karta hai so from the word interoperable and uh, it's also an interactive, inter interoperable, accessible platform because there are different bills you have to pay. So all of those will be available on this platform and using this platform, you can make payments through your debit cards, UPI and other facilities as well. I will be discussing all that now. So if I talk about the system when it was launched, it allowed you to make the payments of bills. So direct to home bills, electricity bills, gas bills, telecom bills, water bills, okay, they all were allowed under this system. Then in 2019, its scope was expanded and you can make the payment of all recurring bills. So we have to make payments of recurring bills, like recurring bills are those where repetitively you need to make the payments, like electricity bill you need to pay after every month, okay, then the broadband bill you need to pay. So all these recurring bills you can pay through this system. It was a one-stop solution for payment of all bills. But the mobile prepaid recharges were not allowed. You can make the payment of postpaid bills, but prepaid bills were not allowed when its scope was expanded in 2019. But now recently, if you go to RBI's website, you can see that they have now included this mobile prepaid recharges also under the bill biller category. So by August 30, 31st this year, it will be implemented. Now, why it has been done? It has been done to increase the coverage so that more customers can easily pay their prepaid bills as well or even they can recharge their uh, mobile phones where they use their prepaid sims. So this is going to provide you the facility wherein you can make the payment for your electricity bill, mobile bill, landline bill, broadband, DTH bill, gas bill, water bill. So all these bills you can pay using one platform. Earlier what used to happen? You need to go to the center where the electricity bills are to be paid. Then for broadband bill you need to go elsewhere or you may might use, you might be using their websites to pay. So at different places you need to pay the bill. Electricity bill ke liye aap website pe jaoge ya unki center pe jaake pay karoge. Broadband ka bill aap 
अलग वे से पे करोगे डी का बिल आप अलग वे से पे करोगे अलग अलग जगह आपको जाना पड़ेगा अलग अलग वेबसाइट पे सो so, ये एक सोल्यूशन है जहाँ सारे बिल्स आप एक साथ पे कर सकते हो एनी टाइम एनी वेयर सो इफ यू आर अ पर्सन रिसाइडिंग इन डेली एंड योर पेरेंट्स आर लिविंग एल्स वेयर देन यू रिसाइडिंग इन डेली कैन पे देयर बिल्स ऑल्सो इवन इफ दे आर नॉट द बिल्स टू बी पेड फॉर से कंज्यूम इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन डेली सो एनी वेयर यू कैन पे द बिल एंड एट एनी टाइम यू कैन पे द बिल सो भारत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम इज एन इंटीग्रेटेड बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम वेयर इन डिफरेंट बिलर्स एंड एजेंट्स आर ब्रॉट टूगेदर it offers interoperable and accessible bill payment service as i have already told you numerous electricity providers okay they will be there on this platform accepting the so accepting the bill payments different uh, gas suppliers dth suppliers mobile rechargers so re- recharge platforms all of them will be available over here you can make the payment using this platform okay there are there's a network of agents they there will not it's not just that you can make online payments you can also visit their centers where bbps is accepted and make payments over there and instant confirmation you will get for your payments made so if i talk about the different payment channels available under bbps so e- either you can make the payments using internet banking using the website or through the mobile banking but there is also an option available where you can go to a agent a retailer shop which accepts bbps and you can ask them to make payment on your behalf you can also go to the bank's branch which accept bbps okay and then you can make the payment so you can go to the website of bbps and check who are the agents okay there they will ask you about the pin code and you can uh, locate the nearest agent also so why this was introduced when we already had e wallets accepting the bill payments because uh, because there was a need to standardize this thing for entire india okay in order to standardize the things to make these facilities available for those who are not in tier 1 or tier 2 cities not uh, the people who are there in unbanked regions okay there also uh, they will uh, provide you the agent shops retailer shops if you can't go and pay online yourself then you can visit the bank branches or retailer shops or agents who will make the payments on your behalf if you give them the money so how you can make the payments there are different payment modes also you can make the payments through cards through net banking through account transfers through upi cash and many more okay so you will go to this platform and or through its website or you can visit the agent retailer shop and ask them to make the payment of the bill through either upi card net banking and so on so forth so sare type ke bill ki payment aap alag alag mode se alag alag jagah pe kar sakte ho agar wo sab jagahein wo website wo mobile banking aapka bbps system follow karta hai to bbps ek system hai all right so you can go to a outlet which accepts payment or a bank branch and give them the bill the money which you want to pay and in return they will give you the receipt that your money has been paid or if you are going through a online website or mobile banking then you will get the confirmation on your through your email or mobile itself so this system brings all recurring payments at one touch through any mobile or laptop or retail shop which will enable faster convenient and secured experience talking further they have a central unit okay bpc bbpcu that is bharat bill payment central unit to ek unit hoga jo sari functioning dekhega and that unit in india is your npci the national payments corporation of india so it will set all the standards for how the functioning needs to be conducted it will brand market promote bharat bill pay make people aware about it all the clearing and settlement taking place through bbp and through this very bharat bill payment system will be handled by this central unit all consumer complaints will be handled by them risk fraud or risk management will be undertaken by them then registering maintaining all the billers and the agent institutions billers and agent institutions are 
those um, those uh, billers are basically those who accept the payments okay your electricity boards your gas boards jo aapke payment accept karenge and then there are agent institutions also ओके ये लोग वो सब होंगे जो आपके बिल पेमेंट्स एक्सेप्ट करेंगे एंड जो आपको वो फैसिलिटेट करेंगे जो भी आउटलेट्स खुले हैं जहाँ पे जाके आप बिल दे सकते हो सो ये सब की मॉनिटरिंग आपका एन करता है देन वी हैव बी बी पी ओ यूज दैट इज बी भारत बिल पेमेंट ऑपरेटिंग यूनिट सो ऑल दीज एजेंट्स विच आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट आर योर बी बी पी ओ यूज दे आर ऑथोराइज ऑपरेशनल यूनिट्स हु आर रजिस्टर्ड और वी कैन से हु आर हैविंग ऑथोराइजेशन फ्रॉम आर बी आईज एंड दैट दे कैन कंडक्ट ऑल बिल पेमेंट्स सो इफ यू गो टू दे वेबसाइट यू कैन सी हु आर एक्चुअली दोज बी बी पी ओ यूज सम एग्जाम्पल्स आर एयरटेल पेमेंट्स बैंक एच डी एफ सी बैंक आई सी आई सी आई आई डी बी आई जियो पेमेंट्स बैंक पे टी एम पेमेंट्स बैंक फोन पे एक्सेट्रा ओके मैनी मोर आर देर सो ऑल ऑफ दीज यूज बी बी पी सिस्टम सो भारत बिल पेमेंट सिस्टम नाउ दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट द सिस्टम इफ आई मूव बैक टू द क्वेश्चन इट टॉक अबाउट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स फिट इन बोथ दीज प्लान्स so except mobile prepaid recharges all bills were accepted now that is also included under biller category i hope this concept is clear to you now moving on to question number 2 bombay stock exchange has set up wholly owned subsidiary company bsc administration and supervision limited it has received recognition from sepi to perform its functioning starting 1st june 2021 Which of the following states the objective behind the setting up of this company? So recently, BSC has set up its subsidiary company, and its name is BSC Administration and Supervision. So from the very name, it's clear that it will be undertaking some administration and supervision work. So what's its objective? The answer to this question is option A, that it is going to grant recognition to registered investment advisors. and then it is going to supervise those registered investment advisors so let us have a look at what do you mean by investment advisors or registered investment advisors first of all what is investment advice obviously getting an advice for making an investment you want to make investment in the capital markets you want to invest in different securities but you are not very clear how much to invest where to invest which is a good uh, good option for you available so all those advisory things which you need the advice the guidance which you need related to where to invest how much to invest whether we should purchase or we should sell how we should deal in securities which investment products we should prefer uh, what should be included in our investment portfolio so all those advice which you take is called investment advising and the ones who provide that service wherein they provide you the advice those people are known as investment advisors so these investment advisors need to register with sebi because sebi regulates the market okay so the ones who are registered with sebi are known as the registered investment advisors they uh, should give very good advice to their customers or their clients and these advices should be in the best interests of the clients so they'll help you with financial planning managing your portfolio tax savings helping you to decide where how much when to invest okay so this is the role of regulated investment advisors so sebi being a market regulator regulates them investment advisors who are registered with sebi can only provide the financial advice to the investors now who needs to register as an investment advisor any person any company individual sole proprietorship partnership firm if they are willing to provide the services of investment advisors then they need to register with sebi so sebi will tell them about their sebi prescribes their registration terms eligibility criteria qualification uh, it prescribes how much amount they can charge from their clients and a lot more procedural things so sebi from time to time updates or keeps on amending the rules with respect to these registered registered investment advisors so earlier sebi used to directly deal in their regulation but now what has happened now bombay stock exchange has set up a separate company which will be its wholly owned subsidiary and that company will be dealing with the administration supervision of these registered investment advisors all right so how it is going to help why has a subsidiary been set sebi will not specifically deal in it this unit it is going to specifically or directly deal with them 
and it will regulate them, register them. This will boost the in, um, faith of the investors. It will bring in more transparency and help in uh, ensuring the investor confidence in these in advisory services. So that's the very objective why uh, 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 we have set up this very unit to specifically deal with the regulation supervision of these RIAs. It's very important to regulate them. All existing RIAs will become the members of BASL. Okay, जो already registered लोग हैं, उन्हें भी इसका member बनना पड़ेगा और जो नए लोग हैं, उनको अगर SEBI के साथ वो register कर रहे हैं, तो उसके अलावा उनको इसकी भी membership लेनी पड़ेगी. New applicants also also if they want the RIAs license, they have to obtain the membership with this BASL before applying with the for the registration with SEBI. So this was the concept which I wanted to discuss and we have already answered. Answer is option A. Moving on to question number 3. What does it refer to over here? So let's read these statements one by one. The first one says, it is a category of investors comprising of institutional investors who are invited to subscribe the shares before the IPO open so that it jazzes up the popularity of the issue. Second one says it gives a lot of comfort to small investors as it indicates the faith shown by institutional investors. So what they are talking about? They are talking about the category of investors. So these investors are the institutional investors. They are the qualified institutional buyers like pension fund, mutual fund, insurance companies who have enough funding, good amount of wealth. Uh, they have knowledge about financial markets. So what do they do? These uh, these investors, they are invited to subscribe for company securities before the things are made public through an IPO. I, what is an IPO? Initial public offering. It is when a private company makes its shares open uh, for public to subscribe. Jab koi company, koi private company apne shares public ke liye open karti hai ki wo securities humari kharit sakte hai. That's an IPO. So, jab IPO honne se pehle hi aap kisi type ke investors, institutional investors ko wo share kharidne ko kehte ho, un investors ko hum anchor investors kehte hai. Okay, the investors who subscribe to your shares before you make an IPO. Now, why is there a need that those people should subscribe before making an IPO? When you are making an IPO, you are the company who are uh, um, offering their securities for the very first time to the customers, to the retail investors, small investors, and they might be they might not be aware of your company, they might not be interested in buying the shares of your company, or they may be hesitating that this company might not do well, so there's no need to invest. But if these investors, they have good image, they are well known, they are institutional investors, when they invest in this, those companies, then it will uh, increase the trusts of uh, the small investors. They think that, okay, these are big institutional investors, they are investing in this company, so it's a good company. We should also invest here. So that confidence is provided by these investors. So who are these investors? The answer is option C. They are known as the anchor investors. Anchor investors are institutional investors who subscribe the shares before IPO which jazzes up the popularity of the issue. Ye aapke IPO ko popular banayega taaki aur log aake aapki securities khari de. Unka trust padega aapki company ke shares mein kyunki bade bade institutional investors ne maha invest kiya hooga. So they are the qualified institutional buyers who agree to buy a company's share and they invest an amount equal to at least 10 crore. Kam se kam itna amount ho invest karte hai. Then there is also a requirement that they need to lock in this investment for certain time period as well. So whatever shares you are offering in an IPO as much as, as 50% can be offered to QIBs and of this 60% can be allocated for your anchor investors. So anchor allotment is done a day before IPO opens. IPO hone se pehle hi unko allot kiye jate hai securities. Roping in them gives a lot of comfort to small investors because it indicates the faith shown by institutional investors. Now you might be thinking why I'm explaining the anchor investment concept. What is its relation to finance current? So if you have gone to the newspapers, you would have seen that LIC is planning to go for an IPO and it has also planned to clutch in or to bring in a clutch or to uh, not clutch in, to bring in a clutch of anchor investors. 
टू इन्वेस्ट अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड करोड़ सो गवर्नमेंट प्लान कर रही है कि ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड करोड़ तक का अमाउंट वो एंकर के सिक्योरिटीज वो एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स के थ्रू रेज करेंगे दिस डाइवेस्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट इज प्लानिंग बिकॉज द मनी दे विल यूज विल बी द नॉन टैक्स रिवेन्यू इट विल हेल्प इन कंट्रीज फिजिकल डेफिसिट Uh, reduction. It will also help to compensate for all budget expenses which government is incurring. Now, talking about why government is planning to bring in anchor investors. See, LIC is planning that it will go in uh, for changes in their board structure. In uh, they will adopt some new norms and then they will go for an IPO. So when so much of structuring changes are being made, then it's uh, it, it uh, basically leads us to questioning the. sustenance of the company whether after all these changes company will be able to lic will be able to sustain grow or not so there are questions with respect to that so if these investors will bring in money they will invest and it will increase the trust of investors confidence of investors and help to increase the demand of securities and an ipo then there is another important advantage which they offer Now what might happen? आप कंपनी के शेयर्स एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स को अगर ऑफर करोगे वो कुछ प्राइस पे उसको खरीदेंगे ठीक है बाद में जाके जब मार्केट की डिमांड ज़्यादा आती है और सिक्योरिटीज़ के प्राइस ज़्यादा बढ़ जाते हैं तो अगर एंकर इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टर्स ने कम प्राइस पे किया होता है ना उन सिक्योरिटीज़ के लिए तो वो और मनी दे देंगे जो आपके मार्केट प्राइस को मैच कर लेगा लेकिन अगर डिमांड इतनी नहीं आती ओके okay, और जो एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स ने अमाउंट पे किया था वो ज़्यादा था मार्केट प्राइस अब की डिमांड के हिसाब से कम निकला तो वो जो एक्सेस अमाउंट दिया है उन्होंने एक्स्ट्रा अमाउंट दिया है वो रिफंड नहीं ले लेते उसका वापस ये बेनिफिट हो जाता है कंपनीज को सो दैट्स द बेनिफिट ऑफ हैविंग एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स दे पे अ सर्टेन अमाउंट एंड द मार्केट इज रेडी टू पे मोर देन दैट ऑन द डे ऑफ आई सो एंकर इन्वेस्टर्स विल ब्रिंग इन द एक्स्ट्रा मनी टू मैच मार्केट प्राइस इफ नीडेड बट इफ द मार्केट शोज अ डिमांड ऑफ लेस then they will not refund the extra amount which they have given this is the benefit of having anchor investors so the answer to this question was anchor investors moving on to last question of the day india's retail inflation raced to around 83 month high 6.3% in may breaching the upper limit of central bank's inflation target for first time in around 6 months what is rbi's target range for inflation so we are quite uh, aware of this we have been seeing how our wpi was rising we have been seeing cpi rates for past uh, few months okay we have i have taken different session where i talked about cpi wpi numerous times right so retail inflation has risen now to 6.3% so in this six month period it is the first time that rbi's target range has been surpassed rbi ek target range set karta hai ki itne had tak hi inflation honi chahiye usse zyada hogi to matlab hame kuch changes karne padenge apni policies mein apni range maintain karne ke liye so rbi ki ye range kya hai ye question ye pooch raha hai so you are aware that rbi's range is uh, 4% with plus minus of 2% right so 2 to 6% is the range right isse zyada aapki inflation nahi honi chahiye ya isse kam nahi jaani chahiye 2 se 6% honi chahiye 4% mein 2% uh, ka upar niche chalega that's the range so answer is option b uh, retail inflation has risen to 6.3% this month and wpi to 12.9% so wpi has reach the 11 year high last time when we discussed the session on this it was i think around 10.49% uh, right so it has gone to a more high level of 12.94% in may due to rising crude oil and manufactured good prices retail inflation has been um, again on heights around if you take uh, past 7 years data i think this might be the highest value 6.3% so it has breached the upper limit ओके वी अपर लिमिट इज सिक्स परसेंट उसको सरपास कर दिया है सो वाई दिस राइज इन रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन फूड प्राइजेस हैव रिजन फ्यूल प्राइजेस हैव रिजन वी हैव सीन राइज इन दी पेट्रोल डीजल प्राइजेस एंड देन इफ दे राइज द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट राइज एंड अल्टीमेटली द रिजल्ट कम अप इन दी फूड प्राइजेस ऑल्सो विच आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड सो दीज आर मेजर रीजन बिहाइंड दिस हाई रिटेल इन्फ्लेशन Now, if you say whether this uh, more than six percent will continue in the coming future, in the near future or not, it is too early to say that. We might sustain this very uh, inflation, or we might not. Right? RBI's prediction about the inflation rates this year have been surpassed, so RBI might need to revise them. As far as it is concerned, that whether 
the monetary policy should be changed to handle inflation uh, it doesn't seems that rbi will change its stance okay as long it's it is uh, as long as it is necessary to maintain the growth we might sacrifice with respect to inflation so given the growth and inflation dynamics rbi will not be in a hurry to tinker with their policy rate or its accommodative monetary policy stance so we have seen uh, that rbi told that as long as it's necessary we'll maintain the accommodative policy stance सो so, ये इन्फ्लेशन प्रॉब्लम्स क्रिएट करेगा हमें सेम स्टैंड रखना चाहिए कि नहीं हमें पॉलिसी रेट्स बढ़ा देने चाहिए इन्फ्लेशन कर्व करने के लिए अभी की हालत देखते हुए नहीं लगता कि आर बी आई पॉलिसी रेट सबसे बढ़ाएगा बिकॉज ऑफ कोविड दी इकॉनमी इज सफरिंग सो ग्रोथ इज नीडेड बट इन्फ्लेशन प्रॉब्लम्स क्रिएट करेगा सो लेट सी वॉट पॉलिसी आर बी आई कम्स अप विद दिस वॉज ऑल फॉर टूडे सेशन आई होप दिस सेशन फॉर यूजफुल फॉर यू ऑल विद दिस आई वु लाइक टू एंड अप दिस सेशन थैंक यू सो मच